Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Ryan. Today I'm going to be talking about the new 1099K reporting rules from the IRS. And really the only reason I'm doing this video is because it's so frustrating to see the uh, outrage and the misinformation and all the bullshit going on on social media. So I figured it'd be worth a video to hopefully get some actual relevance and correct information out there so people will stop freaking out about it. All right, but first, before I get into it, I would love it if you consider subscribing to my channel. And if you, you know, think anybody would find this video helpful, please share it with a friend, hit the like button, all that jazz. All right, so on to the K 1099K. What is the 1099K? So basically, prior to 2022, if you have a business and you accepted payments via credit card, PayPal, Venmo, as business payments, um, the, the reporting agency, like let's say PayPal, would have to issue you a 1099K if you exceeded over $20,000 of sales through PayPal. So that means you know, you'll get a copy of the 1099K and then they will also issue one to the IRS so that, so that the IRS knows that you made at least $20,000 of income through PayPal. Same thing with the credit card merchants. You know, if you made more than $20,000 of sales, then they would issue you a 1099K. So the new rules in the IRS for 2022 moving forward is that they've lowered the $20,000 limit down to $600, meaning if you made over $600, then you're going to receive a 1099K. And you know, if you're familiar with uh, independent contractor rules, you know, where you, you know, prior forms were called the 1099 miscellaneous. Now contractors are paid with the 1099 NEC. The reporting rules are the same here, where if you were paid more than $600 as a contractor, then you should be issued a 1099 uh, NEC. So this is kind of mimicking that rule uh, of the contractors, except with just credit card and payment services. Now, why are people freaking out about this? Well, the complaints I've heard on social media are that this is total government overreach. They're just trying to see what you're doing, trying to look into your privacy, and you know, they're trying to figure out what's going on with you, track your money. Okay. Another complaint is they're trying to steal, they're trying to steal my money. They're trying to steal the money that I'm making by you know taxing it. Or uh, people are complaining, well, what if I pay my boyfriend half of the rent for the month and he gets taxed on it, or I get taxed on it? And that's first of all, that's not even how that works, but you know, now they're going to tax us because I'm paying my boyfriend through Venmo on half of the rent. And then the last complaint I see is just people with businesses basically saying that they're going to switch to cash only now because huh, this is bullshit. I'm going to switch to cash only so that the government doesn't know what the hell I'm doing. And so they can't tax my money. Okay. So the, the first complaint or the first issue with that logic is that if you own a business, and you're switching to cash only so that you can avoid taxes, that's illegal. That's called tax evasion. That's underreporting income, tax fraud, whatever the hell you want to call it, that's illegal. Okay. So don't do that. All the complaints I just mentioned are really misguided. And uh, it's just because people who are not familiar with the tax code are sharing this, these news stories and, you know, creating outrage over them when they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. So I want to talk about what the difference between like income activities and non-income activities and what's going to be reported on the 1099K. So first are income activities. If you have a business and you sell stuff for money, for a profit, that is an income activity. Okay. That's anything. If, if you own a business and you take credit cards, if you take PayPal or Venmo as payments and you're selling a good or service for a profit, that is income and that should be reported on your tax return regardless if you get issued a 1099 or not. What about if you're reselling items on eBay or Craigslist? Well, if you are selling items for profit, that is income and you should be reporting it on your taxes. No, I don't mean selling your three-year-old TV for a hundred bucks. That is not for profit because you likely bought that TV for more than a hundred bucks. I'm saying if you are, you know, scouring Craigslist, for really good deals and then selling them for a higher price than you found them for, that is an income activity. That is reselling. That should be considered income and should be reported on your taxes regardless 
if you got a 1099 or not. And you know, basically now, if that's the case, you might have to report this income now if you haven't been doing it before, okay? And if you haven't been doing it before, then you have been not following IRS guidelines. Okay, so what kind of activities are not income activities? You know, this includes like, like I mentioned before, selling old items on Craigslist or eBay or Facebook marketplace, uh, typically are not income activities because you're just getting rid of stuff, kind of like garage sales, okay? You are likely selling these items for a huge loss because they're used, they're old, you did not uh, get more money than you paid for them. Another thing is, that is not an income activity is if you were, you know, if you went to a fun little lunch with your friend at Benihana and your friend paid for it and then you wanted to pay him half of it back on Venmo, because you know you felt like that was the right thing to do that is not an income activity to your friends that is not going to generate a taxable 1099 document you know if you do this 20 times over the year to the same friend and you paid him this paid the same friend and maybe you exceeded over a thousand dollars in payments he's not going to get a 1099 for that because uh, that's not an income activity you're just reimbursing your friends and another complaint i see a lot is what if you're just paying your spouse half of the rent or half of the mortgage because you know they pay for the whole thing out of their primary bank account and then you just want to pay them back each month that is also not an income activity to you or your spouse so that won't be reported on 1099k and i hope a lot of people just calm their asses down on this okay so how does paypal or venmo know whether or not you're paying someone for benihana or if you're paying someone for a good or service for a business. Well, how are they supposed to know that? Are you supposed to notate on the notes? You know, hey, this is for my fun little lunch with my friends, and this is for like a massage that I paid for, uh, for a profitable service or business. Well, when you go to pay somebody on PayPal or Venmo, right before you pay them, you have the option to choose whether you, you're paying a friend or you're paying for goods and services. Okay, goods and services, usually through Venmo or PayPal, offer like a customer protection and a refund policy and all the stuff that allows you to get your money back. If you were to receive like a shitty product or a service, then you have a process to claim your money back and get a refund. Paying for goods or services as a business also will charge the seller a fee. So that's, you know, the main thing that you'll see there is when you pay for goods and services, the seller will be charged a fee so, so that PayPal can accommodate customers who have refunds, claims, and all that stuff. If you're paying a friend with your checking account, then there usually is no fee through PayPal or Venmo. You also can't have any process to get that money back because if you're really just paying a friend, then uh, you can just ask your friend, hey dude, just, I overpaid you, please send me some money back, okay? So, if you, pay for some, if you pay for something as a goods or service, that would count towards the 1099K reporting for the person that you're paying. If you're paying somebody as a friend, that will not count towards the 1099K reporting for your friend. If you're selling your old stuff on Craigslist and you're worried about people choosing the option that they're paying you as a good or service, just please ask them not to because this, because you know, I have not had that happen to me. I'm sure it's happened to some people. But you know, how, how pissed off would you be if you're selling your old TV for hundred bucks and then your buyer pays you and you receive like 85 of it because PayPal took, took out like $15 of fees. And then you're not really getting hundred bucks. And you know, this is not really like a, like a transaction that should be a sale of goods or services, even though that's what it says on PayPal. I wish they would make that wording a little more clearer, you know, because that is not like a taxable transaction. So. I, I, you know, I, I hope that PayPal or Venmo make those options a little more clear for people so they actually just select like paying a friend when, you're buying, when they're buying your old stuff on PayPal or Venmo. Should you be worried about the change f of this rule? Um, I would say no. The only people that should truly be worried are people that are under-reporting income or not reporting income at all that when they should be reporting it. You know, the, the folks that are screaming that they're gonna take their business to all cash now. Those are the people that should be worried, okay? Because they were probably not reporting their income anyway. And another note there, if you are paying somebody 
for a, as a business for a goods or service and they specifically ask you not to pay them as a business and they ask you to pay them as a friend, I would probably not work with that person. You know, they're, they are either trying to avoid taxes or the goods or service that they're providing are really not adequate. So they don't want any type of claim of refunds process on their goods or service. So it's one thing to forget to pay them as a business, or it's one thing to just pay them as a friend and just not even think about it. It's another to ask your customers to not pay them as a business. That is, that takes a whole new level of shadiness in my opinion. So that's all I got for today. Thanks for joining me. Sorry for my half rant here. I uh, just wanted to clear the air here. You don't have to, you know, the majority of people who are like just exchanging money and reimbursing each other for things, they don't have to be worried about this new change of rule. It's not going to affect them. Yeah. Hope you stay safe. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Change up.